We are nearing the end of our journey. This is the last screencast of this series. And we're going to wrap up approximation algorithms by looking at two strategies for developing approximations for MP-hard problems, randomization and a relaxed version of linear programming. Meanwhile, the Hialakai is returning to Honolulu Harbor from a five-week voyage to the northwestern Hawaiian Islands. So let's look at randomized approximations. A randomized row of n approximation algorithm is defined exactly the same as a regular row of n approximation algorithm, but it's based on expected cost rather than the actual cost. That's the only thing that's different. So we're going to be interested in polynomial row approximation algorithms. The example we'll use is called max 3 CNF set. Remember that third conjunctive normal form or three conjunctive normal form is a form of a logical expression where you have a disjunct of three literals, that's the three. A literal is a variable or its negation. And there's a conjunction of those disjuncts. So that's an example of a three CNF. Three CNF set is the question of, does there exist an assignment of Boolean values to these variables that satisfies the formula? And then the maximization version of that is we relax the requirement that all of them be satisfied. And we ask what assignment will satisfy the maximum number of them. So you can even work with formulas that are logically inconsistent where it's not possible to have all of them be true. But you could find a maximization that gets more of them true. And this can be useful in applications where you're dealing with conflicting requirements and you're trying to meet as many of them as possible. Now, surprisingly, the randomized algorithm that independently sets each of these values, each of these variables, to a value with probability one half of it being true and one half being false, is a randomized 8-7 approximation algorithm. And this is really kind of surprising. Let's try an example here. I've got a coin. I'm going to flip it for x1. and that comes up tails, so x1 is 0, uh, but that makes this clause true because it's got a not x1 in it. Let's flip for x2. Actually, this one makes is already true as well. Let's flip for x2, and we get up oh, tails again. Uh, so that's 0, but that's 1. Um, so we've already got 2 out of 3. x3 is heads. There's a 1. We've, uh, we've satisfied all of them just by choosing randomly. So let's have a proof that um, we will always get within 8 sevenths of the maximum number of clauses that could be assigned. So we're going to use indicator random variables for this. Remember those things from way back early in the semester? They are still useful. So let's define y sub i will be the indicator random variable uh, for clause i is satisfied. And then remember our famous lemma. The most important lemma for indicator random variables is that the expected value of it is equal to the probability. So what's the expected value of one clause being satisfied? Well, I'm going to write that up here. Uh, let's write it in terms of the um, probability that the i is not satisfied, right? That requires that all three of these be zeros. And they're all based on coin flips. So that's going to be 1 half times 1 half times 1 half, or 1 half cubed. So the probability it's not satisfied is 1 eighth. Therefore, the probability that the clause is satisfied is 7 eighths. So you can see where this 8 7 is coming from. Uh, so the expected value of each item is 7 eighths. So now let's ask for the expected value of the overall, all the clauses of, of y. And that, of course, is the expected value of the sum i equals 1 to m of all the y of i clauses. And then we use the linearity of expectation. This should all be really familiar from earlier in the semester. Linearity of expectation means we could move the expectation in. So now it's something that we have an expression for up here. Uh, so that's the sum i equals 1 to m of 7 eighths. 
Uh, of course, that means we're adding up 7 eighths m times. So it is uh, m times 7 eighths is the expected value. So we expect 7 eighths of the clauses to be satisfied. But m is the upper bound on all of them being satisfied because there's m clauses. Uh, so if we want to know the approximation race ratio, c star to c, c tar, star to c, c is the uh, what we have here, m times seventh eighths. So that's uh, m over what we over have over here, m seven eighths, which is equal to eight sevenths. And that gives us our result that this is an eight seventh approximation algorithm. Just randomly flipping coins will get you eight sevenths within the optimal of what how you can satisfy a uh, three CNF sat problem. Now randomization doesn't always work out so well. It just happens that um, the structure of this problem, it works. As we get closer to home, entering Honolulu Harbor, we'll now move on to linear programming approximations. A linear programming approximation is where you model a MP-hard problem with a linear program, but then you relax some of the requirements. Most common way of doing this is that you write an integer linear program, which is uh, integer linear programming is MP-hard. So you can map one MP-hard problem into another this way. But then you relax the requirement that it be integers. You let it solve with uh, real numbers, and then you use the real numbers to find some approximation to the, um, the integer solution to the problem. So we're going to do this with the minimum weight vertex cover problem problem we're given a graph g equals ve as usual but we're also given a uh, weight function w which is going to map uh, each vertex to some value greater than zero uh, for all the uh, vertices in v and then our problem is to find the vertex cover v prime which is a subset of v as usual but the minimization part is not just minimizing the number of them but minimizing the sum uh, for the v in the cover, uh, their weights. So some vertices are more expensive than others. We want to find a cover that uses minimum weight vertices to do the cover. So how can we model this with a linear program? Well, let's uh, define for each vertex. We're going to define x of vertex to be um, 1 if uh, the vertex is in the cover and zero otherwise. So x of v tells us whether the vertex is in the cover. And now we want to minimize what we had above, except we'll do it across all vertices, v and v, not v prime, the weight times the x. V. So of course the x will select out only adding in the weights of those that were selected for the vertex cover. Subject to what constraints? Well, for each edge in E, we have to have one of the two vertices in E. At least one of the two vertices has to be in the cover. And so that means at least one of the two vertices at the endpoints of an edge have to be a value 1. So let's say the edge is uh, U and V. So we're going to say X of U plus X of V, those are the two vertices at the end of the edge, have to be greater than or equal to 1 for each U, V, and E. So that would be true if every edge is covered by some vertex. But we also have a constraint because the vertices are either in or not in the uh, cover. So we have another constraint, and here's the critical one, that the value of x must either be 0 or 1. That's what makes this an integer linear programming problem. The solutions must be integers. And that's MP-hard, so it's not surprising if we could map another MP-hard problem to this one. But the linear programming representation of the problem has the advantage over the original vertex cover representation of the problem in that we can relax the linear programming version. We can say, let's relax this, and instead we're going to allow x of v to be between 0 and 1. And that's written out as two equations in linear programming. So there's the relaxation in green. 
And now here is the algorithm. Essentially, the algorithm sets the cover to empty. It runs the linear program that we just wrote up above, the relaxed real number version of the integer linear program. So x is going to be given values between 0 and 1 inclusive. So if x is, of v is greater than or equal to 1 half, uh, essentially we're rounding. We're saying uh, for larger values, let's round it up to 1, so let's put it in. Uh, add it to the cover set. If it's less than 1 half, we don't add it. So it's not random. It's not like flipping a coin. It's we've run a linear program that gives us a real valued solution that's an approximation to the integer one and then we convert it from the real valued solution to the discrete zero or one version. So what we need to show here is that approximate weight VC is a polynomial two approximation algorithm for the minimum weight vertex cover problem. We can see that it's polynomial because we know there's a polynomial time program for linear programming, the simplex algorithm. And these lines are also polynomial in time, so no problem there. It must be a vertex cover because of the definition of x of v and this important constraint here that the sum of the x values of the vertices at each endpoint of an edge must be greater than or equal to 1. So in order for that to be true, at least one of them must have a value of 1 half. So at least one of them is going to be in the cover because you can't have this equation be true if both of them are less than 1 half. So at least one vertex on every edge will be in the cover. So it's polynomial, it produces legal vertex covers. All we got left is a show two approximation. And this takes a little bit of work that I'm going to have to make some room for here. So let's let C star be the optimal solution that we're looking for, or that we're trying to approximate. And uh, Z star will be the optimal solution to the relaxed linear program, the solution we actually found. So we want to know the relationship between these two. Well, first of all, the um, solution C star involves assigning some integer values to the variables that must be a feasible solution to the relaxed linear program. The relaxed program can assign integer values to variables, but it's allowed to also go to non-integer values. So C star is in the feasible uh, region for the relaxed program. Uh, and it's possible that when you relax it, you can get a better minimization. So this gives us the bound that Z star uh, is a lower bound on the, the weight of C star. Where we use this notation to denote, of course, summing the weight of all the vertices in the, um, in the cover set. Now to get us a bound in the other direction, we're going to also note that Z star uh, let's say what it is, but by definition, we are minimizing this expression here. So it is some value for all the vertices in V obtained by summing the W's of the V's times the X's of the V's. But this is greater than or equal to the sum of just those uh, V in big V where the x of v was greater than or equal to 1 half, because those are the ones that we're, um, we're interested in here. Right now we're still in the uh, relaxed world here. So that I'm saying this is less than because I'm dropping out the x's that have a value less than 1 half. So these are non-zero values I'm dropping out, but that's what that makes this expression less than. But since all the ones that I'm adding in now are at least 1 half, I can replace that expression with, again, this is the, um, the v's in big V where the x of v was at least one half. Same thing I have over here. But I'm just going to replace w of v with one half. Um, so that's less than or equal to this because these values here are at least one half. So let's just put one half in there. And now we can um, move things around a little bit better. We can say well, that's going to be equal to V in the cover set because these are precisely the vertices that ended up in the cover set. V and C, W of V times one half, and that we can now move that one half out. V in the cover set, the weights, which of course is one half the weight of the cover set that we actually found, C, not C star. 
So this gives us, summarizing this whole chain here, this gives us Z star from right here is one half W C. So to finish this up, I had to remove all that work and this is this last expression here is what that work ended up with and we can rewrite that as w of c is equal to 2 z star that's just this thing here but we have the prior result of z star is less than or equal to w c star so we can write less than or equal to 2 w c star And that gives us WC, the weight of our solution, is no worse than twice the weight of the optimal solution, which is what we're looking for. It is a two approximation algorithm. So that is an example of how linear programming is used to do approximations. And this is also used for other problems as well. There are other examples in the CLRS text, uh, set covering problem that has many applications approximated using a simple greedy algorithm with a logarithmic approximation ratio. There's also subset sum. You may remember from uh, the uh, topic 24 lecture that can you find a subset of numbers that sum to t? Well, there's an approximation version of that. What's the largest sum you can get that gets closest to t without exceeding it? That has applications to things like packing a truck, you know, how much weight you can fit in a truck, or, and many other applications. And that can be turned into a polynomial time approximation scheme, which means we can specify how close we want to get, trading off how much work we do. So let's conclude with a summary of strategies for what to do when you're faced with an NP-hard optimization problem. You can basically just as I said, suck it up, use an exponential algorithm, and stick to small problems. You can look for special cases for which polynomial solutions are known, and there are many of those. You can give up on optimality and try approximations, and we found uh, different strategies for doing that. There's some heuristic, like the um, minimum spanning tree heuristic for a traveling salesperson problem. There's the integer linear programming problem being relaxed to real valued solutions. And then there's, in a few cases, randomly choosing is actually uh, within two twice as bad as the optimum solution or within a reasonable amount. But don't expect that to happen too often. That concludes our review of approximation algorithms for MP complete or MP hard problems. And that concludes our semester of algorithms. We're back safely at home. Thanks for traveling with me.